Well, hello, everyone. Thank you for joining today's webinar, Signing and Concluding Business Contracts Electronically. Before I hand the mic over to Chan Yunani, our moderator for today's session, I do have a few housekeeping details to cover. Firstly, this webinar will be recorded and shared after today's presentation. Next, we would love to hear from you during the session. All participants have been placed in listen-only mode. So if you do have a question for our speaker, please feel free to send it through the chat feature. We'll be answering questions at the end of the session. If we don't get to your question during today's webinar, we will be sure to follow up via email afterwards. So without further ado, I would like to kick things over by welcoming our moderator, Chan Gurnani. Chan, over to you to introduce our speakers. Thank you, Jenny. Really excited to be here today. As Jenny mentioned, my name is Chan, and I'm the Product Manager for Enterprise Workflow Solutions here at Rico Canada. Uh, I would like to introduce you to our presenters today, uh, Franz Gangel and Kevin Morton. <coughs> Franz is the Director of our Digital Transformation Consulting Team. He's considered country's leading expert for all things related to document-centric digital transformation. We have Kevin Morton on the call. Kevin is our manager for professional services and has over two decades of experience selling and implementing digital transformation solutions at some of the country's largest uh, brands ranging from retail, government, to higher education. Uh, welcome on board, guys. Uh, we have a lot of great content coming up, so let's take a quick look at the agenda here. So first we'll talk about the importance of electronic signatures. Then we will uh, explore different kinds of signatures commonly used in the workplace today. Then we'll talk about the legality of electronic signatures in Canada. Uh, we'll compare legacy versus electronic signature process, uh, look at some common use cases, and finally get some recommendations on next steps from the experts on the call. With that being said, I will hand it off to Franz and uh, Franz. So thank you, uh, thank you to uh, the attendees on the call for jumping right into the polling question. What is your organization's most pressing need right now? Cash flow, work from home, or business continuity? And uh, Betchan, I believe we'll give it another 30 seconds or so before we, before we uh, share the poll results. Okay, and we'll bring this to a close and take, take a look at our results. So leading is work from home, absolutely. Uh, many of us are likely uh, working from our home office right now at 43%. Uh, second is business continuity, concerned about uh, how we're going to maintain our business flow during these times. And uh, third is cash flow at uh, just under 18%. Thank you for everyone for uh, sharing your thoughts during that poll. And we'll have a couple more polls like this uh, before the end of our session today. These are certainly unprecedented times. And as we're hunkering down, following the government guidance for social distancing, or are responding to the need for uh, organizations or the need for people to deliver on our essential services, all of us are taking a closer look at what is important for our businesses. E-signatures can help with cash flow, work from home, and business continuity. From a cash flow perspective, e-signatures can allow business to be transacted and for revenue to be recognized even without the use of paper. From a work from home perspective, users can sign and approve documents and contracts without the need for printers, scanners, ink, or paper. Only an internet connection is required, email and a web browser to 
uh, fulfill an electronic signature transaction. And from a business continuity perspective, agreements can continue to be processed. Signed agreements can be stored and done so securely online and accessible from anywhere. So what are e-signatures? For those of us that transact business cross-border, the US e-sign act refers to electronic signatures as an electronic sound, a symbol, a process, attached to or logically associated with a contract or other record and executed or adopted by a person with the intent to sign the record and be legally bound. I think when people first encounter that interpretation from the US e-sign act, they're surprised that an electronic signature can be more than simply putting a, a digital version of my signature on an electronic document that it can include a sound or a symbol or a process. Indeed, these are all methods that can be used to demonstrate intent and provide a signature. Closer to home, the Personal Information uh, and Electronic Documents Act, Part 2, PIPIDA, states that a signature that consists of one or more letters, characters, numbers, or other symbols in digital form incorporated in or attached to or associated with an electronic document. So this one speaks more familiarly to how we might interpret an electronic signature, characters, numbers, or other symbols in a digital form. When we think about signatures, let's, it's helpful to take a look at the differences between a wet signature, a digital signature, and an electronic signature. A wet signature we're all familiar with, it's a permanent mark that's linked to a stable document, usually paper, that is associated with a specific personal individual and is proof of implicit or explicit intent. It generally requires the presence, certainly the presence of the user to apply the wet mark onto paper. There are issues with liability in terms of the uh, nature of the signature and how it was applied. Uh, there are challenges with authenticity and forgery, who actually applied that signature. And there are cases of challenges with intent uh, with regards to the signature. But certainly a signed document, we understand that the signer had the intent to sign and therefore agreed to the agreement. A digital signature is one that is posted by digital media. And there are various methods that digital signatures can be provided and therefore have variable reliability. A common trend right now is we're all trying to figure out how to sign documents is to simply scan our signature and apply it as an image to our electronic document, whether a PDF, Word, or Excel. And unfortunately, that lacks many of the benefits of integration, enterprise security, and workflow and is really somewhere between wet signature and digital signature in terms of validity. However, it absolutely demonstrates intent and needs to be treated as such. An electronic signature is one whose attributes have been strengthened thanks to cryptography with the purpose of increasing the reliability of the document. With an electronic signature, the process of achieving agreement can be tracked. There is security around the signature of the document. Documents that are signed electronically can, cannot be changed once they've been signed. And therefore, electronic signatures can be demonstrated to be legally binding. It's one thing to apply a signature to a document using a digital signature, but really when you think about electronic signatures, it's a, an agreement management process. Some of the expectations that we have from a strong e-signature solution should include the ability to create flexible agreement management workflows. 
the ability to preserve the audit trail. Ideally, a method that allows a flexible delivery model, such as software as a service. The end user experience should be easy and uh, easy to adopt and learn with little to no training. Ideally, the solution should allow custom branding so that our businesses can be represented well inside that signature process. Single sign-on should limit the amount of authentication required, particularly by our internal users that are creating the, the documents to be signed. There should be uh, variable certificate management processes. And the solutions to integrate with off-the-shelf business applications like Salesforce, or integrate with in-house or custom-built applications via APIs. And finally, the document data integration and validation process should be well understood throughout the process. What are some of the use cases where electronic signatures might be applied? And I think we can think about electronic signatures in three types of agreement management processes, business to business, business to consumer, and business to employee. When we think about business to business, we're thinking about things like non-disclosure agreements, procurement documents, sales agreements, service contracts, things like that, are all examples of agreements that uh, can, can uh, maintain uh, our business to business relationship. When dealing with consumers, things like new account opening documents, loan applications, and sales and service terms. And of course, our business to employee uh, contracts uh, include contracts, benefits, paperwork, employee onboarding processes. So as we go through the balance of our presentation, we're going to talk a little bit more about legality. We're also going to spend a little bit more talking about the specific use cases that you might apply. Think about where your needs lie, business to business, B to C, business to employee, or perhaps all of the above. And Chan, I'll turn it to you for our next poll question. Thank you, Franz. Um, audience, uh, like you have done for our first question, uh, please uh, record your responses on the screen, and we will take a quick minute here to go through the poll data after you got a chance to record your response. So uh, in our poll question, uh, which are, is your most urgent use case for e-signature, 37.5 uh, responded with all of the above, 35% uh, are really keen on business to business, uh, 20 at business to consumer, and business to employee at 6.3%. Um, thank you everyone for responding to the poll, and we will continue with the rest of our presentation. What is driving your competitors to adopt electronic signatures right now? Of course, the current epidemic, the current pandemic is creating an urgent need, as we've identified, for people to enable business processes while they work from home. But prior to this, and hopefully once we're through this, e-signatures continue to be a significant market mover. The market is expected to reach 3.44 billion by 2022. It's completely changing industries by remastering core products and services. There is now strong end user and line of business demand for electronic signatures. There's now increased availability, maturability, maturity and scalability of e-signature products. And e-signatures have really reached mainstream adoption. Many of us can now uh, think of situations where we have approved an agreement or signed an agreement using electronic signatures. And there is now consistency in developing legal frameworks 
for electronic signature adoption across jurisdictions. In Canada, signature, electronic signatures are legal. At the federal level, since 2004, electronic signatures are officially endorsed by, the, by PIPIDA as unique and distinctive, created under the signer's sole control, can conform to the identity of the signer, and are protected by technology that can identify changes in the document. And across Canada, at the provincial level, since 1999, electronic signatures are accepted by law under the Uniform Electronic Commerce Act. And indeed, to underscore the urgency uh, for electronic signatures, the Canada Revenue Agency, uh, as recently as this March, identified that they will accept electronic signatures as having met the signature requirements of the Income Tax Act. While they indicate it's a temporary measure to reduce the necessity for taxpayers and tax preparers to meet in person and will reduce the administrative burden during this difficult time. Well, if it's going to reduce the administrative burden during this difficult time, it will continue to reduce the burden when times are better. And we expect that the CRA will continue this uh, approach as we move forward. When you think about a signature process, one where we're likely signing uh, on ink on paper, we think about this in four steps, prepare, sign, act, and manage. In the prepare step, we're creating our agreement. That could be a Word document or a PDF file, perhaps an Excel document that has terms and conditions and places to sign. We might review and collaborate with our teams to get the right verbiage or get the right numbers and details into the agreement. And then we invariably print the document. We print it, of course, so we can capture a signature of a pen on paper. And once it's signed, we might then communicated to the intended recipient, whether that's by mail, or we might scan it, or fax it, or we might scan it and email it. So we take that image of that signed document and then act upon it. We might receive that signed contract and update our records, indicating that agreement has been made and that may trigger additional processes or start a billing process. And finally, that agreement needs to be managed. We will store that document. If on paper, we'll store it in a filing cabinet. Or we might scan it and store it in an electronic document management system so that we can search for it and demonstrate some kind of auditability when, when, we, uh, when we move forward. Uh, or we have to represent or uh, retrieve the document in an audit process. Electronic signatures can help streamline this process from end to end. The RICO electronic signature solution has supported over a billion transactions, supports over a million envelopes daily, and over 2 million connect messages. There are over 140,000 development accounts and 4,000 integrations. It supports various APIs, um, demonstrates significant increases in turnaround time, has Canadian data centers and carrier grade availability, supporting standards like ISO 27001, SAE 16, and SOC 1, and supports FedRAMP and GDPR um, legislation. So when we think about a solution using electronic signatures, then our process might look something like this. Rather than manually preparing documents, we can create from, from pre-approved templates that we can auto-populate with data from other systems or manually enter data. We can prepare our documents and collaborate and comment with multiple parties online and automate the review and approval process by initiating custom workflows. We can prepare with a very high level of automation but of course, we can still proceed manually if that's where we're at right now. From a signing perspective, signing can be done quickly and securely by routing that contract to multiple parties 
so they can sign in either parallel or prescribed sequential order. We can identify each signer appropriate to the jurisdiction and monitor the status of each participant in their signing process so that you know in advance of who signed and who hasn't so that you know where the document is in the signing process. And we can certify the signing process and the completed agreement. To act, the receipt of that signed completed agreement can trigger internal processes dynamically after agreement execution. It can automatically transfer payment amounts to a billing system or collect payments as part of the signing process. And finally, the electronic signature process can manage the flexible option to securely retain agreements in a centralized cloud storage location or provide centralized access across different repositories, such as your laser fees or SharePoint. We can easily retrieve agreements based on specific search criteria, and we can report on agreement completion, turnaround times, and other trends to support continuous improvement. There's a fast ecosystem of out-of-the-box connectors to line of business software such as integrations with CRMs like Salesforce, Dynamics, and Sugar, productivity solutions like Office and Google, ERP solutions like SAP and LaserFiche, and cloud solutions like Google Drive, Box, and Dropbox. So you can get up and running quickly with more than 300 connectors. You can digitize the approval process with your existing industry-specific applications that support streamlined workflows to get more out of your existing investments and that is easy to deploy. Earlier, we talked about typical use cases around business to business, business to consumer, and business to employee. Now, here's a breakdown of departmental uh, business cases across the business. We can take a look at sales orders, such as referral, reseller, or field sales agreements, and new customer signups. In the HR department, we're looking at contractor agreements, onboarding and offboarding checklists, employee policy distribution, and payroll forms, new hire paperwork. Think about finance, invoice processing, expense reporting, policy management, inventory sign-off. From an IT operations, tracking assets and change requests and order fulfillment, and legal, non-disclosure agreements, contract management, internal compliance and finance agreements, to name a few. There are applications across marketing, facilities, support, and product management and procurement, such as customer approvals, work orders, account changes, cancellation requests, change and release management, purchase orders, statements of work, RFP sign up, and so many more. So with that in mind, Let's take another moment to break out for a quick poll on what departments within your organization will you be using e-signatures for? Jen? Thank you, Franz. Uh, the poll is live, and audience, please record your response on your screens. We will close the poll in a few seconds. Here are the results. Over to you, Franz. Thank you, Chan. Uh, the, almost half of the respondents indicated that sales was a key area for them. Not surprising given our need for managing business continuity um, off the top and work from home. Uh, in our initial poll, Chen, uh, followed by 20% in finance and 
uh, other and uh, HR being at 13% and IT operations at 8%, other at uh, just under 11%. So significant uh, need to use electronic signatures to optimize sales first and absolutely make a lot of sense. At this point, uh, we'd like to share uh, a success story. And uh, to share the success story, I'd like to hand over the presentation to Kevin Morton. Take it away, Kevin. Thanks, Franz. Um, just want to cover off real quick on a, a success story I think is relevant to the time. Um, we had uh, a major credit union in the interior of BC that was looking at automating um, some processes. They focused really on four major areas. One was mortgage renewals, stop payments, stop automatic payments, and funds, funds transfer. Um, I really just want to focus in on the mortgage renewal process just so that everybody can understand the end-to-end. -end. Franz covered that agreement path, and this is a true example of leveraging that agreement path. And in today's time, this gives the, um, the credit union the ability to continue to function um, as normal. So the mortgage process would start with um, someone would go to their website, they would access um, a request for a mortgage renewal. That mortgage renewal would go into a mortgage uh, agent within the uh, credit union. That credit union, that mortgage advisor would um, make the necessary changements to the changes to the agreement, prepare the paperwork, and then they would send it back to the client. The client would review it and approve it through electronic signature and submit back to the credit union and then they would be able to release the funds and renew that mortgage as per normal. This is all electronic. They did not have to leave their house. They did not have to go into the branch and, and this allowed them to adopt to a newer mindset of being able to be virtual to their clients, their customers. One of the the main focuses of this was to improve the client experience. However, they also saw a 76% reduction in cycle time for processing uh, applications. So this is a, an end-to-end -end story of creation through to approval, through to execution, just like Franz had covered off. I want to just kind of identify where do you go from here. Um, we've covered a lot of information, and, and you're going to have to go back and understand where do we start. So some of the keys are to identify use cases that impact cash flow right away. Uh, at this point in time, with the current situation, um, getting cash moving through an organization is key to sustainability of any business. You also want to examine specific use cases uh, for business value. Uh, having the ability to uh, transact electronically allows uh, customers to interact better with you as a, as, a, as a vendor, as well as provide services quickly. You want to look for a product that you can expand and grow over time. This is about the high touch. Uh, can I, if I implement a, an application process that I use once a month, is that the key area to focus in on? Implement, you want to solve immediate business requirements. In today's time, you need to get back to business. You need to be able to function and be able to process orders and agreements. So that's the priority today. Get buy-in, get support, and then it will expand within your organization. Focus on must-have versus nice-to-have. You know, if, if cost becomes an issue, it does not make sense to start with the most complex, convoluted process that's not going to give you a return on your investment right away. And really, the, the crux of this is if you're not looking at e-signatures, uh, your, your competitors are, um, it allows you to get back to business today, and our recommendation would be to adopt them as quickly as possible. When you think about RICO, and just to understand a little bit about who RICO is, um, we provide services to 1.29 million custom companies worldwide. We have been looking at evolving the workplace for many years. Um, we have various, various segments of our business that can support organizations, 
And we just wanted to give you a little bit of background about what RICO has to offer, just to, to give you a better sense. So our, our portfolio of services include document processing services. This is about large AP outsourcing. If you have accounts payable process and getting uh, invoices processed in a timely manner. We have services that can provide that support. Communication services, in this time that we're in where a lot of people are virtual or remote, we have a whole host of solutions that can enable uh, remote work and uh, collaboration. Content and workflow services, uh, we will talk a little bit more about content and workflow services on Thursday. Chan will cover off um, that, uh, about that webinar. But essentially, this is giving you access to your documents where you need access. Um, remotely, on-prem, whatever. It's, it's a today, for, today solution and a day forward solution. On-site managed services, we can provide resources on-site. When we get back to uh, normalcy, uh, we can get people on-site to support you where you need. We have an entire IT services organization which can provide consulting, cloud services, infrastructure support. And then we have our specialized e-discovery uh, services, which is really in the legal space. But this is about understanding um, legal documents, doing legal review, and uh, file analysis, and, and ensuring that your data is protected. And then the last thing I'd like to share, there is uh, this link will be shared with everybody uh, on the call. There is an electronic signature 30-day free trial that gives you an opportunity to understand how it works, um, where you can leverage it, and it and really gives you a sense of how you can better use it in your organization. At this point, I will turn it back to Chan to uh, talk about some additional webinars that are coming up. Thank you, Kevin and uh, Franz. That was really good content that you presented. So uh, for the audience, before we go into questions, uh, I want to mention that we concluded our first webinar in our New World of Work webinar series. Uh, there's more to come. Uh, please take a look at the rest of them on your screen. Uh, I want to particularly point out to uh, the webinar that's happening on Thursday, the 16th, around secure access to business critical information. Uh, in that webinar, we will talk about document-centric workflows, business process automation, and uh, that webinar will be a natural extension uh, to the just-concluded e-signature webinar. So make sure you join that webinar as well. With that, uh, with that being said, I would now like to move into the questions part. Uh, Franz and Kevin, we do have some questions from the audience, and uh, I'll be, uh, I, we have about five questions, and, uh, and we will be uh, uh, talking about those now. So, I believe this first question is for Franz. Uh, the question, Franz, is how do I know which contract or agreement process to focus on for our first electronic signature project? Thanks, Jan. Uh, good question. Um, I think that the requirements will be based on the type of organization and the specific organization requirements, but generally I would say that organizations are thinking about how to maintain cash flow and revenue while servicing their existing clients right now. And so things that are related to sales agreements, customer onboarding, um, service onboarding, service work uh, are taking a higher priority now. And then the specific types of documents will vary by, uh, by vertical market based on that list. Very good. Thank you. Next one is to Kevin. So mm -hmm. Kevin, the audience has asked if our e-signature solution integrates with uh, their internal Salesforce instance. Uh, absolutely, yes. Um, Rico actually uses it with our Salesforce instance. Um, ultimately, there are, I believe, 4,000 plus integrations out of the box uh, for our solution. Um, Common platforms like uh, Microsoft, uh, Dropbox, Google, uh, Laserfish, th they all have integrations um, with the e-signature solution. Um, also mobile capabilities uh, on your iOS, Android, and Windows devices. Um, in addition, we have uh, developers that can uh, work with the API uh, to do custom integrations where needed. 
And uh, so absolutely. Very good. Uh, Kevin, I believe this is for you as well. Uh, what documents are supported for electronic signatures? Um, pretty much, I, I would like to say every document type, but again, it's, it's really relative to the specifics. But your standard document formats, um, the way uh, the application works, uh, you actually tag where you want to put, uh, where you require the signature to actually uh, highlight the area um, where you need a signature or approval or an initial. Um, but it's all your standard formats, your, um, you know, your Word documents, your PDFs, your Excel files, they are all capable as well as image files. Okay. Thank you. And um, another question here, uh, Kevin, this is also for you. What is the average cost to deploy an electronic signature solution in my HR department? Um, it's really dependent on, on the number of transactions. Um, I can tell you from an entry level perspective, uh, the way the solution is, is um, priced is based on, on uh, transactions and there's a minimum requirement. So uh, to say that an entry level organization doing a minimum of 500 transactions, uh, that solution is going to be sub five thousand dollars. It's just not 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 you know a thousand dollars, but it'll be in the in the three to five thousand, depending on uh, what what features and solutions you need. Again, it's it's uh, what do you need today, and then you grow it from there because there are a lot of feature sets that you can add to the solution. Um, but that's that kind of gives you a rough estimate, and I, I think you know, we'd be more than happy to share the detail once we have a little bit of engagement from our consulting team to better understand the use cases and where you're going to leverage it. Excellent. Uh, this is for both of you, I guess. Uh, so th this is a two-part question. The first part of this is, uh, this particular customer has an internal process uh, based on dollar value. It requires multiple levels of signature for approval of PO uh, requests, et cetera. So can our platform handle that? That's the first part of the question. Sure, I will. Uh, I'll take that, uh, Kevin. So the uh, the workflow of the tool allows you to do um, multiple uh, variations of signing. So um, you can set up a default agreement, and if an agreement value goes over a certain level, it requires the next level of approval. Um, we can also do, um, you know, a waterfall means it goes from one signer to the next to the next to the next. You can also go as far as having it based on anybody can sign in any order. So there are multiple different avenues um, for approval. Uh, you even have the feature of if you need a notary, um, so somebody, a witness beside you, uh, we even have the capability to do that as well. So the approval process can be built uh, depending on how your organization needs it. And yep. Un understand that it's, it's treated as one transaction for multiple approvals. Awesome. Um, Kevin, I would just add to that is they can do sequential signatures. They can also do parallel signatures, right? Yep. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, very good. Uh, now, the second part of this question is how much does it cost to have a process like that set up? So the the um, cost um, would still be based off of the same example I gave you in the previous question of, of it's really relative to the number of transactions. The way the tool is designed is there is, um, we call it adoption consulting, which is basically overview of how to use the workflow tool. We can leverage, um, you, well, the intent would be is you would have a power user within your organization that could build those workflows. However, we have additional resources that can work with you as a, on a consulting basis, you know, time and materials to help determine those workflows. But the tool is designed um, that uh, a power user should be able to create those standard workflows and processes. Our, I'll give you an example. Our legal counsel um, with, with variable uh, contracts, he tags and signs his own documents with the solution. Okay. All right. Uh, next question. Uh, this audience member wants to know uh, 
why they should be purchasing this uh, purchasing Rico electronic signature solution versus a product like Adobe from 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 that vendor. So, Frank, do you want to take one. that? One? Yeah, absolutely. So, yeah, so uh, I would say that uh, there, there are quite a few uh, good products in the market, and Adobe is certainly uh, certainly one of them by a well-known vendor. Um, I think that uh, generally uh, usability and experience uh, to do basic uh, e-signature workflows and processes would be comparable, uh, but I would give uh, Rico's solution the edge in terms of its ability to integrate uh, with uh, many, many different applications, both out of the box and with APIs, and then the overall end-to-end -end, uh, process uh, in terms of parallel and sequential approvals. Uh, while both have it, I think uh, Rico's implementation seems to be a bit more streamlined uh, based on user feedback. Thank you, Franz. And just to add to that, we also provide a range of digital transformation services where uh, the electronic signature could be a part of a much larger project, and uh, we, we, we can provide all those services like what Kevin has mentioned earlier, right? So that's another value uh, we bring to the table. Okay. Um, next question, is our platform ba built based on monthly transaction or annual? I'll take that. Um, so it's an annual uh, subscription um, that is based off of the number of transactions, and it, it's expandable. So the, the best way to describe it is we would do some analysis with our team to understand the average number of transactions that are going to happen in any given month, and that gives us a basis to determine uh, the pooled number of transactions that we need, and then it's an annual subscription uh, that we then monitor and report on as we go through the year. We'll advise where you're at in your, your subscription and usage, and if you need more usage, we'll expand it. If you need less usage, if you're not at the minimum, we can lower it as well, but we will manage that. Okay. I think we have time for one more question, and uh, this one is, uh, so for all authentication, uh, it, so for, I guess, uh, let me rephrase this question. So for digital signature, or rather here, electronic signature, where is truth A stored? Because there is two truths here, uh, so they're asking where the information is stored. So the transaction is stored within, um, the uh, the electronic signature uh, repository or cloud, for lack of a better expression, that's uh, you know we talked about Canadian residency, but you can also download the transaction, and there is options to use uh, uh, third party um, blockchain as well. So that transaction can be held in multiple multiple locations. It's really dependent on uh, what you require. Okay. All right. Jen, the, uh, uh, the requesters, I would say the requesters question is uh, one that uh, would be, uh, would be a, a very, uh, is a very good question and it has, uh, would have some additional conversation that would, would need to be had to explore that in more detail of how we uh, support those requirements in the electronic signature process. Thank you. I think uh, that's all the time we have for questions today. Uh, well, thank you everyone for joining today's webinar. Uh, we, we really enjoyed this webinar and uh, we look forward to seeing you on our next, uh, next webinar. Thank you.